Welcome to the Building Blocks of Bass. My name is Bob Debu. Really glad you're here joining us today. Um, this, this episode, this uh, YouTube video, whatever, our practice session today, is all about where are the notes, which is directly related to, shameless plug, my new course on Open Studio, and you can find a link for that downstairs. And if you hurry, if you're seeing this after the fact, if you hurry before Friday, there's a discount that you can get uh, for $27, I believe, which is awesome. It will walk through some of the course, but I don't want to talk too much about it before we get going. Let's start by tuning up, because if we're going to find where the notes are, and this is really so much about playing in tune, getting our claw position together, and all of this is uh, based around Smandl's uh, positions. So we're going to deal with half position, and we're going to get into some higher positions, too, and talk about how those work out. So let's start by tuning. So I've got my tuner here. I like to tune to a um, to a piano if I can, or a tuning fork if I can. Oh, I do have my tuning fork close by. So I really dig doing this. And most of the times, I'll just have it in my bass bit, but it's off right now. So let's call this our A for today, OK? So you got your bass. Let's catch an A. OK, cool. From there, I like to grab this harmonic that's at the A string on the, uh, I'm sorry, that, where the A would be on the D string, where we need to find where those notes are first, right? And catch where the D would be on the A string. If you play those harmonics, they should sound the same. So, all right, those are in tune. Great, so I'll give you the open strings. Here's G, D, you've probably already tuned, which is good on you, but just in case. And then E. Cool. All right, so let's get into it. We're gonna look at our, this is our first position that we're going to deal with. It's not called first position, it's called half position. And it has to deal with the lowest notes on the bass. So we're talking about, this is specific to the upright bass, by the way. Uh, we're talking about getting the, our three notes in each position, because we only, on the upright bass, we use our index finger, middle finger, and pinky. Let's just talk really quick about how that works, OK? So it's, it's really important to try to get on the tips of your fingers to get an optimal sound play these notes uh, with curved fingers, keep your thumb behind the neck. That's just, you know, however you can make it sound really good and feel right, that's the ticket. But having good technique can get you there quicker. So that's what we're talking about here too. So let's look at what we have just with the first finger in half position, okay? So where our first finger would go, this is F, right? So right there, you can tell I've got my elbow up, I'm pulling back. Now, when you're playing on the lower strings, right, the tendency is to want to break the, the wrist. But a good rule of thumb, and I learned this from Michael Moore, amazing bass player, not the filmmaker, but amazing, amazing bass player, uh, who talked about the striker method, or striker technique, where you're going from the flat part of the back of your forearm into the flat part of your wrist. So just like this, almost natural, as if your arm was hanging down, make it look like that. Now that's a bit of a trick to make happen when you're on the lower strings, but that's kind of what I'm trying to, do, to go for. So if we look at the graphic down here, we see this is half position, just the notes on the first finger. Let's go through them. So we've got F, B flat is on the A string, then E flat on the D string. And you see that I have them notated here in Roman numerals, so I call the E string one, the A string two, D string three, and of course the G string four. So let's go to the G string, this is four. With our first finger on the G string, or the fourth string, away from you, that's A flat, okay? So you can see on the graphic here too, I have notated F, B flat, E flat, A flat. Let's go through them again. So F, B flat. Now try to hear these as you're moving. It's one thing just to move your hands, put your fingers down where you think they should go, but we really do need to listen to these for them to be in tune. Right? Play on the tips of your fingers, a really good exercise to work on the length of your notes to see how long you can make these notes ring for. Okay? It's going to be different on different bases, different setups, right? Okay, so let's do our first little test here. Where's A flat? Play A flat. 
How about B flat? E flat. F. B flat. F. E flat. B flat. A flat. E flat. F. B flat. I know Costa's laughing at me right now if you're still watching. F. E flat. A flat. B flat. All right. I couldn't fool you. Awesome. You know all those notes down there. And those, that's like home territory. You know what I mean? So knowing these notes down here, that's really super important because that's the low end, that's the foundation of the bass. In my course, Where Are the Notes, we deal with all these positions going up. But before we get into that, let's check out what happens with the second finger. So now, again, with the upright, we use, typically we use what's called the claw, and there are different methods uh, of, of fingering on the bass, but we're talking about the most uh, widespread, common one, which is the Smandel method, right? So what we want to do here is keep our first finger where it was, over, the, over where the F, the B flat, and the E flat, and the A flat were for first finger in half position. And now we're going to involve our second finger. So with our second finger, we'll play F sharp. Now, when we get into the second finger here, we can start to use our open strings that we know are in tune to check our pitch as we go. So what I like to do is play this F sharp, and then play my open D string. It should sound fairly pretty. It's like an inverted major third, right? Or a minor sixth. That's a little more obtuse one, but let's go to B. So on the A string, second finger is B. And you can check this. You could check this with the G string and do a similar type of idea. So it's a minor sixth. It should sound pretty though. It's like an inverted major third. Or you could hit B and play the open E string to hear that, that perfect fifth. And it should sound pretty round. Now, if you have any issue, if it sounds like it's out of tune, that's really not a problem, right? Uh, we practice that. But if, uh, if it is out of tune, if you notice it's out of tune, just fix it. You know what I mean? It's not a big deal. Let's go to E. This is E on the D string. So our second finger is going to play E right there. And of course, you could check this with your open string. Now, I talk about checking, but I'm listening. If I hear any like beating, that doesn't really sound right to me. You know what I mean? I gotta move that right back down to really get in there. Again, play these notes as long as you can. How about A? So A is where our second finger would land in half position on the G string or the fourth string. And same idea, right? Play, check it against your A string. So it's pretty close. Some days are better than others, some are not. And the bass always fluctuates too. So let's go back and review those notes. So we've got F sharp. B, E, and A. Let's go check back against our first finger really quick, okay? I'm gonna take away the graphic and we check. So now play me an F. B flat, E flat, A flat. Okay, let's go down from the highest string down with our second finger. So what note do you have with your second finger? A, E, B, F sharp. All right, so play me a B. F, F sharp. E flat. B. G sharp. E. How about B flat? A. A flat. E. E flat. F sharp. Now I'm, you notice we're staying in this position. We're staying in this half position. We're not shifting up. Could have caught an F sharp up here, right? But we're not dealing with that. We're trying to stay right in this same half position. Let's check out what happens with our pinky real quick. So the pinky is usually notated as the fourth finger because we don't play our ring finger. It's the weakest finger. You try this out really quick with me. Put your, like, put your arm out like this and take your fretting hand. What I call it a fretting hand. Your left, typically your left hand. Whatever you're pressing down the notes with and curve your fingers just a little bit and lift up your first finger as high as it'll go. Okay, now put it back down. Do the same thing with your pinky. A not as high, but decent. Okay, put it back down. Now do your uh, middle finger. All right, feels okay, right? It's fairly high. Now try it with your ring finger. All right, that's me really, that's me really pushing it. You know what I mean? So that's, the ring finger is the weakest finger in our hand. I don't know why, but it's connected to the, the middle finger. If you just look how, how your hand is laid out, it's typically 
the, the middle finger and the ring finger are connected like that. So we don't use third finger down here on the bass. We use it when we get higher, like when, you know, when we're getting the thumb position or in the higher positions, sixth position, five and a half, et cetera. But uh, for down here in our half position, we're going to deal with our pinky. Now, the, a good rule of thumb here, too, is to look visually. You can, kind of, you can kind of look. Because you have this extra finger, the tendency is to push your pinky out a little bit further, and you'll end up playing sharper or flatter between your first and second finger. So if it looks fairly in tune, then you're, then you're on the right path. You know what I mean? Or if it looks equidistant, then you're on the right path. So with our pinky, we have G. Let's start there. So G. Check this against your open G string, and I could just feel my open G string ringing because it's sympathetic, right? So if you're playing this G string, you should see your open G string vibrating because it's resonant frequencies or some physics thing, right? You can also just play the G string and check your pitch against it. So we've got G on the E string with your pinky, and while you're playing these, try to keep your claw together. There are different schools of thought on this. This is just what we're talking about today. Keep your claw together, all right? Let's move to the A string. So on the A string with your pinky, that should be C. You can check that C also with that G, and it should sound like a fifth. It should sound pretty together. How about F on the D string now? So we're looking right here. That's F on the D string. And then B flat with your pinky. Okay, cool. So you can check that against uh, like an open D string if you're used to hearing that minor. That kind of minor six drop down thing, I guess you could do that with the F as well. Let's review those again. So we've got G, C, F, and B flat. I've not even addressed the inharmonic factor of some of this. This is also an A sharp, right? If you want to be silly, that's an E sharp, but it's an F in our world, right? This is also a B sharp if you want to be that guy. But this is a C, right? C, G. And we could go on and on with the silliness, but let's not, right? All right, so where's B flat? C, F, on the, with your pinky, that F. Because we could play that F down here with our first finger inside of that half position. We could also do B flat down here. Now you think about that. But in with our pinky, just find those. So G, C, F, and B flat. All right, cool. So that's all the notes in our half position. Let's just review really, really quick before we move on to some exercises, okay? So let's do first finger across and back down, second finger across and back down, and then pinky across and back down, just to really get them together, okay? So let's start high. Let's start on the A flat on your G string with your first finger. Cool, now make sure you're on your fingertip. A flat, E flat. Say it with me, B flat. F. Now let's go up this direction with our second finger. So F sharp, B natural, E natural, A natural. All right, could always use some work on the intonation. B flat with your pinky, F, C, and G. Okay, cool. So let's get into some of the work. That's just a good quick review of, um, of our notes, where the notes are. Where are the notes? Dan's always on me about this. So let's check out this exercise. And this is an, an exercise that I have written that only, deals with, um, that only deals with the notes that are in this half position. Okay, I'm just throwing out my metronome here so I can listen. So check this out. This is utilizing all these exercises and etudes that I have in the course, and this is directly from the course, check downstairs for a link, um, are all just in these specific positions, and then we shift from half position to first position, second, et cetera, all the way up the base uh, until we get to the, the way the octave break is, okay? So let's check this out. This is utilizing chromatic motion. So we're going to play uh, half steps leading into G, half steps leading well up to G, then half steps leading up to C, just like we would do in a bass line, okay? But let's really try to focus on just keeping everything here in half position, no shifting up or down as much as we can, okay? Let's try it out. So one, 
two, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. And I'm talking about the beats now. And up to B flat. Now the same thing going down. So we'll do B flat, B flat, A, A flat, F, E, E flat, C, B, B flat, G, G flat, F. All right, and then we go back up, okay? So that's that's a slow tempo. Let's bump it up just a little bit to work on this, okay? So let's move this to, let's just move it up to 100. Let's try the same thing, okay? One, two, one, two. G, B flat, B, C, B flat, E, F, B flat, A, B flat, going down, B flat, A. Uh, however you want to practice that right so that's utilizing just just what's in that half position let's move on to another exercise this one takes up more of the page so I'm gonna to try to make sure I fit in there as well now since these are in half step uh, or half notes we're gonna keep the tempo where it's at but here's where the course utilizes more intervallic training and we're trying to use our ear to really hear these pitches right so you can see from line one uh, right there Right? These are all whole steps ascending. So we're going to go from F to G, B flat, C, E flat, F, A flat, B flat. The next line, major thirds descending. So it should sound like ding dong, right? Ding dong. Oh, I didn't sing that right at all. Ding dong. Right? So major thirds descending. So as we're practicing this, we can utilize our ear training uh, as well. Okay? So then the third line, we have major thirds ascending however you'd like to hear that my daughter wants to hear it a little stir it up you know uh, so major thirds up you can utilize that in a certain way uh, and then finally major uh, major seconds or whole steps descending so anyways should be clear cut we can keep the metronome this is at a hundred beats per minute try this with me okay Remember, all right, our concept here is to stay inside of just right here in this half position, okay? Let's try it out. One, two, one, two, three, four. Now, as you're doing this, try to hear the next note that we have coming up. Down. Thirds up on G flat, B flat, B D sharp, E G sharp, and then whole steps down from B flat. Let's do this again, and we'll go through and just say the names of the notes as we do it. Ready? So here's the top: F, G, B flat, C, E flat, F, A flat, B flat. Now A to F, A. sharp it's a major third e g sharp now the whole steps down b flat a flat f e flat c b flat g f cool okay so let's see if we can't take that a step further let's play this like it's in cut time so all quarter notes instead try it with me so it's written as as half notes but let's play them as quarter notes you ready one two one two, three, whole steps. Major thirds descending. Major thirds ascending from G flat. Whole steps down. How'd you do on that? Well, if you hung on to that, that's great. Let's make it eighth notes. One, two, 
One, two, I hope I don't mess up. So all of these exercises, you they're written in half, or they're usually written pretty simplistic, but you can always make them more rhythmically enticing, right? So let's check this out now. Here's the next example. And again, this is all from Where Are the Notes, my course that you can find at openstudiojazz.com. Special discount until Friday. Click the link downstairs. Let's do, this is a similar exercise, but we're dealing with different intervals, okay? So still in half position. And we go through all of the positions doing exercises just like this, actually exactly like this, but transposed into each position and we take it a step at a time, okay? So let's check this out. We should be fairly familiar with these notes. It's just a matter of associating them now. Perhaps you're not very comfortable reading the notes just yet. So we have these on-screen graphics that can help you. So if we get, if we know that F is first finger, we know that C is fourth finger on the A string, you can start to see those on the notated staff and it might help you. So let's try it out. Here's exercise three in half position. You ready? So one, two, one, two, three, go. C, B flat, F, B flat to B flat. Now A flat, these are minor thirds down. E flat, C, B flat, G. Try tones up. Time as the whole, uh, I mean the, the quarter notes now, okay? One, two, one, two, three, go. Do we dare some eighth notes? Let's do it. Whatever. Eighth notes. Same exercise, we're just quadruple timing it or whatever. You ready? So one, two, three, and four. Again, for me. Cool. So we're staying inside of that half position, really getting cozy in there, right? All right, let's check out one or two more exercises of the examples from the Where are the Notes course, and then we'll move into another position, all right? So here is just exercise. Eh, you know what? Let's skip this one. This one is a little bit more musical. We're going to jump to exercise six, okay? And this deals with uh, finding some actual, like, chords inside of just this half position. So it's basically I have all the chords, like, notated above it. Let's just play through and see what it sounds like, okay? Again, you can find the PDF downstairs. Just click down there. All right, so here's example six. One, two, one, two, three, four. F, C, F, B flat, F, B flat.
I don't think I'm going to take that one into, into eighth notes. <laughs> we'll skip doing that one. Okay, so that's half position, right? Of course, we're not going to get into all the positions today, but let's jump way up and get into fourth position. So there's half, one, etc. up, 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 until we get to fourth position, okay? So it goes higher as well. We get up to sixth position. And again, these are all from the Smandel technique. But let's check this out. What are the notes in the sixth position, or fourth position, excuse me. Now, it, we start getting into this area and it really starts to come in uh, into areas that people haven't spent as much time studying. And we are, of course, skipping through a lot of positions right here. It's usually F with your first finger, F sharp with your first finger, G with your first finger, G sharp with your first finger, A with your first finger, B flat with your first finger. And now we're here at fourth position where B is your first finger. So let's check out the notes, where these notes are across fourth position. Okay, so just with our first finger, we want to find B. Now, of course, the tone, the timbre of this B is going to be different than this one, the one that we did in half position, but the, intent, the pitch should be similar or the same, ideally, right? If you check that maybe against your G string, you can hear that as that minor sixth, but an inverted tenth or a third. Now, uh, on the A string, it should be E. And of course, you check that with your open E string. So we've got B, E, and of course, these are on fourth, so it's tuned similar to the bass just from here on out. So A, check that with your A string. D, first finger on the G string, check that with your D string, open D string, right? So let's go back and review. So B, E, a and D. Ah, I was a little out of tune there. That's that's totally okay, right? I'm cool with that. I play out of tune a lot, I'm trying to fix it, but there we go. So let's look at what uh, in fourth position where our second finger would be at. Okay? So second finger is just a half step above where B is. Now when we start to get higher up the neck, the notes are actually gonna get a little closer together, but we still want them to look equidistant or very close together. So let's find C and you can check that against your open G string. It should sound real pretty, that 10th sound. Then F, then B flat, and then E flat. Let's check those again. We've got C, F, B flat, and E flat. Cool. Let's check out our fourth finger. Let's move right along, okay? fourth finger now. So we have D flat and this is pinky. When I say fourth, this is pinky. Earlier up here, but that's all right. That's, that's what we're dealing with. So we've got D flat or C sharp, G flat or F sharp, B, you can kind of check in with your E string there, and then E finally on the G string. So again, we have D flat, G flat, B, and E. Okay, cool. So this is fourth position, right? Let's go back and just review. First finger, B, E, A, D. With second finger, we have C, F, B flat, and E flat. Let's check out the fourth finger. D flat or C sharp, G flat or F sharp, B natural, and E natural. Okay, cool. So that's great. We learned like what those pitches are, right? But we want to get really comfortable in these positions, and that's what's up with where are the notes. Uh, that's one of the, the, the benefits that we're trying to, or one of the things that we're trying to get better at. So here is an example from fourth position. And this is our example four. I don't think we hit it in half position. I think we skipped over this guy. So, but let's check this out now, okay? So the first, uh, first line that we have here is all uh, tritones, okay? In different positions, or not different positions, but with different fingers, right? So we're gonna hit B to F, and then we're gonna jump up to our second finger and play C to G flat. And we're gonna shift that same idea over to the next two strings. So we've got B, F, C, G, 
G-flat, and it can really be a game changer to say these notes out loud. Uh, you can have a different connection with them, right? So now on the A string, first finger, we have E. So what's a tritone? B flat, then F to B. Same thing on the D and the G string, A to E flat. I hit them both there. And then B flat to E. Right? Okay, so that's cool. That's the first line. Let's look at the, the next line, which is major thirds up. So we're gonna hit B natural with our fourth finger, major third. And do the same thing with our second finger to D. So you can see we've got this position, this like pattern that's going on. What's really tricky is to keep the fingers out of the way and make these notes as long as possible. And of course, play in tune and think about what notes what notes you're playing at the time, right? So let's try it. Okay, so here's exercise four, we're in fourth position. Try it with me. You ready? So one, two, one, two, three, four. B, F, C, G flat, E, B flat, F to B natural, A to E flat, B flat to E. Now our major thirds, B to D sharp, B flat to D, G flat to B flat, brain here, F to A, D flat to F, and then C to E. Let's try it one more time. So try tone. Now try to hear these. Really connect the notes too. Play on the tips of your fingers. If you can keep your fingers curved, that's great too. So let's push it a little bit. Let's take this in the cut time, play these as quarter notes now. You ready? One, two, one, two, three, four. Now our major thirds. Eighth notes? Let's just do it. Let's do eighth notes. So one, two, three, and four, and. And again. Cool. So that's fun. To me, that's really fun, and we're working out this dustier position. You know what I mean? So, all right. Check out one more, just really quick, in fourth position. We'll just do this once or twice, okay? This is the same last example we did in half position, except now we're figuring out how to hear this in fourth position. Try it with me. One, two, one, two, three, four. So B, F sharp, B, E, C, F, A, F, B flat, D flat. Where are these notes? So we're, we're bouncing through, we're, we're skipping through some of the other exercises and we've skipped through a lot of different positions, of course, too. But uh, you can get in and uh, really we, we get to work on this course, hitting all the other positions. We get up, of course, higher to fifth. Um, we hit fifth, 
five and a half, six position. So I just wanted to really quick share some of the, what the course looks like too. So we'll just check this out and I'm always, I don't know how I feel about seeing this, but it's hard for me to watch these back. So let's just do it together, huh? Make it easier. Um, so here's what the course kind of looks like when you open it up in Open Studio's page. And I'll just let this, this jam for a little bit here. We were so, on B flat for the third and a half. Now so we're we were just B talking about half, the fourth position. third and a half position, okay. and then bouncing. And again, into we've hit a B natural here. before. Back when we were in half. Now if you look over here, position, this B natural is on the A string. You can so see that we've B got B. all, and you've got these three different Listen camera angles, which I really like. So you can see the left hand happening here. Big difference. You can see the in right the, hand the happening here. Sound quality, right? You can slow again, all this down. Just want too, to be which aware of that. Listen yeah. as much as you can to your, you know, to your instrument when you're practicing. A bunch of on-screen well, examples finger here. When we're in third and half positions, so we can see all of these here. We can check this C against open G. Make sure we're in the ballpark yep. at least pitch-wise. Talk about the same kind of things. That While we we're doing this today, today and we get higher practice up, it's important to note that I'm leaving we're hitting space all the positions. My so we do a welcome, my a welcome half position, first and second positions, two and a half to third positions, three and a half to fourth positions etc. all through all of them, okay? We've also got some worksheets for every single every single lesson. You can just do audio versions of the lessons if you just want to listen and practice along that way too. So I just thought I'd share some of like an open studio makes this look so good here too with these different camera angles. Where you can see how we're playing the notes here in our left hand and when we're plucking in the right hand just to check out technique and things like that too. So, like I say it's you know so again, we have C sharp, F sharp, B, and E. Checking against all, the open all the fingers, all that stuff B, too. E, A. So, anyways, regardless, regardless, I'm very proud of this uh, this new course, Where are the Notes, and I think it's I think it's really going to be beneficial to people that have uh, just started playing upright. If you're coming from electric bass, moving to upright, or if you're just getting you know getting used to upright from another instrument as well. Or even if you've been playing for a while, you know, these are good exercises to go through and, uh, and revisit where these notes are in all of the positions. So uh, it was definitely, you know, eye-opening for me to make the course and get through it again and be like, okay, where is this note? Where are these notes in the fifth position? You know, et cetera, et cetera. So anyways, that's my spiel on that. Uh, you can get the, the course very cheaply downstairs. It's... Uh, $27 until Friday, which is a pretty crazy deal. So, all right. So I'm going to head on into the comments and see what's up. Uh, let's see. Where do we leave off? Left off with Alexandra. All right. Dave is always here with some good advice. Lately, I've been clamping on a snark tuner to my bridge between the G and G strings. For is this cheating? My intonation is getting better. Hey, so you know what? I usually have one. I left. I did a concert with Peter Martin the other night, and I took my snark off my bridge because I usually leave one there too, Dave. Set it on the stand, and that's always how I lose my snark tuners. I've been through like four or five of those suckers, and uh, I don't think it's cheating. I mean, it's good to get tuned up, and if you're practicing to work on the intonation, I think that's great. Um, you know, if it is helping your intonation, there's nothing wrong with that, right? Right? There's nothing wrong with that. Um, I do think it's uh, a good idea. And I also do this with, uh, I didn't do this in this course, but I do this in my own practice and with my own students, where we use uh, a sequencer to play the pitches along with it. So we can use, you know, like uh, certain sounds, like piano sounds, to check our intonation with while we play these exercises, right? They're already in Sibelius for me, so. Or checking your intonation with a drone. You know, I think that's a really good practice, and I really like doing that too. So it doesn't help with some of the more you know, using the different intervals. It's tricky to make that happen, but it can, it can work. So, but good question for, if you're just getting started on the upright bass too, and you're wanting to find out or hear or get your ear better in tune, totally use a tuner. I've heard people say, don't use a tuner and just use your ear. And that's great too. But if you're really like on square one and trying to find where these notes are, use, use a snark tuner. There's nothing wrong with that. So I might get some flack for that and that's all right, but <laughs> hey, and my buddy Cost is taking it to the next level. Of course, we do this with a bow and really get it down. Exactly. And when you, oh, at Costa, as you know too, preaching to the choir, you already know this. 
do these exercises too, or any of the smando exercises with the bow, and then you go back to playing pizzicato, and man, it sounds different, right? I mean, the bow just opens up the bass. It resonates in a different way, and your pizzicato uh, just sounds better. But really, why is that? That's because our left hand has to really be like, get our feet on the ground, firmly planted on the ground, and feel how to connect that be to play arco. So if we can do those arco, then going to pizzicato is gonna sound so much better and so much more connected to, which is our goal with these, right? So yeah, but great, great point, Costa, thank you. All right, Floyd Shirts, what you up to? Unrelated to this GPS, but what are your thoughts on half size bass for an average size adult? Wow, I don't know. I Initial thoughts is uh, what's average size? Um, and then even a half size bass, I think is, uh, they're technically, they, they're all different sizes too. So initial advice is just really play the bass, see if it feels right, play a bunch of different other basses, see if, how they feel. But if you're, for instance, hypothetically got a great deal on a half size bass and you're like, okay, I really want an upright bass, I'm gonna buy this sucker because it's cheap. But it's half size, maybe it's gonna work. I don't know, maybe that's not this situation or not, but I would say don't buy it. <laughs> I would say go play a bunch of other basses and maybe you already have Floyd, uh, Floyd Church. Or maybe this is just hypothetical too, but play a bunch of basses. If the half size bass fits you, it could be on the upper end of a half size bass. If it fits, if it if it plays well and you really like how it sounds, that's what's up, you know. So, but uh, just make sure it's for the right reasons, you know. Uh, let's say, oh, and then Vincent's like, yeah, if you're trying to save space, yeah, yeah, totally. It it'll fit in a car better, won't it? <laughs> hey, what's up, Edelson? Good to see you as always. Thanks for being here. So hopefully this is useful. I mean, I think hitting all these positions is really gonna help us too. So, oh, thanks, S Jazz B. Helpful exercises, Bob, especially the tritones. Yeah, to really hear those. And you know, that's that's a big uh, point that I'm trying to make in this course too, is to, to really, we're training our ears while we're to hear what it is we wanna play, right? So if you sing ahead of the note that you're about to play, this could be arco, this could be anything that you're practicing, honestly. But the more we're training our ears to hear what it is we're about to play or want to play, then we're going to be a little bit more honest with our music, right, with our bass lines. And uh, it's a constant thing, you know what I mean? But it's something that we can practice, so that's part of this, too. Let's see, Dave, I'll also use a drone tone for the tonic of whatever key I'm in. Yeah, absolutely. I don't know if this was after I'd mentioned using a drone or before or whatever, but yeah, absolutely. This totally works. I was just thinking in some of the exercises like like that exercise for whatever it was, what what drone would we put on for that? You know, to really I guess you could put on the lowest note that we go to and start to train your ear in that direction. That would actually be an interesting I'm gonna have to try that, Dave. You know? I know that wasn't your suggestion, but that made me think of that and that's might be a fun thing to try. So, but yes, using drones is a great way to tune and a great way to check your intonation and really hear, because you may be playing with a pianist where the piano is a little out, you might be playing with a sax player that's a little out, and you have to adjust sometimes too. So we don't have any frets, of course, and we have that luxury. We can move around our pitch a little bit, so. Cool, Alexandra, what's up? I like how it's intervals based. Didn't really get that with classical method study. The bow can help find the center of the pitch because you get overtones when you're there. Thank you, Alexandra. 100% right here. A bow can help find the center of the pitch. It can be a little bit more uh, obscured when we play pizzicato, right? But we can really get to the fundamental, right? Uh, we can really hear that pitch with the bow, which is why it's great to practice these with the bow and all the smandle exercises, of course. Uh, and I know Costa is wanting to talk about Raboth, but I'm not sure if he's mentioned anything here too. Costa, if you're still here, what do you think of smandle? positions. You probably started there, right? Uh, but yes, if, if coming from a jazz background or, you know, thinking about bass lines, walking bass lines, to feel bass lines, Alexander, that's a big point is for me to think about, you know, intervolically and training our ear while we do it. So it's kind of an evolution on the smandle, the smandle technique. So, okay, Edelson, what about to have marks like the electric? Ah, of course. So, I personally don't see any problem with that whatsoever. That's my personal opinion. Um, 
if it helps you to play better in tune and it helps you to to sound better and make it feel better that's cool that's really cool with me it's really not a problem um it could be a problem with the marks if you're glued to your finger bolt, like your neck if you're watching here all the time the first thing that comes up is that okay i'm not going to see my drummer you know if i'm glued to my fingerboard and I get it why we use that. And some people, you know, we use different techniques for really finding where these notes are with our left hand and shifting between the positions. But I think the more in tune we can get with each position, really work it out and feel where that is and get that into our muscle memory, that that's what's up. But I'm also, you know, especially if we're talking about getting way up high, you know, pencil marks, dots, whatever, that's cool with me. It's, I mean, it doesn't matter what I think. But that's, that's my two cents, is that it's fine. If you're practicing that way, just realize that when we get on a bandstand, if, if you're like watching all your notes in your left hand or watching those dots or whatever, then it's going to likely detract from the music. That's, that's, my, that's my thing on that, Edelson. So let's see. Dave, I got the practice with the tuner thing from Lauren. Nice. Excellent. Yeah, she has great videos. Yeah, Lauren, Lauren Pierce. So I think it's legit. Yeah, it, to it totally is. <laughs> it totally is, Dave. Yeah, I wasn't trying to imply that it wasn't. Absolutely. And I love Lauren's videos, too. She does a great job. And everybody over there does. Uh, Chris, what's up? Good to see you again. When playing with left hand, does your thumb move when moving between first, second, and fourth fingers, staying in the same position? Mine, I really don't. Let's see if we can... I don't know how well we can do this. So if I stay in half position. My thumb is more or less staying planted there and I try to keep it planted behind my second finger. It's pretty, pretty common practice to do that. If fourth position two, I don't know, you can't see that probably. But it's really when you get into the higher positions what you do from like up here. Do you leave your thumb right here on the heel? Do you bring it out the side? That's a, that's a that's another that's another topic that has to get dealt with. But yeah, what what do you do, Chris? Do you, does your thumb move? I I think it's good to have it as like a you know my buddy Cole last week was talking about a pivot finger, finger when we're in the upper register, and I think the same thing applies with our thumb or my thumb at least is that I use it. I can shift you know a little bit. I can move my hand but keep my thumb planted is really helpful for me so cool all right floyd shirts thank you as always always appreciate you being here very cool yep thanks for that tip okay cost is here let's see all right depending on what i'm playing i forgot my question now already cost i'm sorry particularly a repeated bass line i revert to smandel but i don't know oh right because we're talking about raboth versus smandel yes but i don't know which position i'm actually in meaning the position number same here. I'll be the first to admit, you know, like um, that uh, I, I never really think about positions. I don't think about that. I think about where these notes are and what I'm trying to hear, how to make those notes happen and try best to keep them in tune. And but really going through all those positions and really getting that muscle memory down, you know, that's that's where it's at. So yeah, Floyd Cole has some great videos, too, for sure. Definitely. So no, that's my new buddy, man. I like Cole. 